Hello, and welcome to another puzzle video, continuing in our Marquise de Cat series. Today we're looking at a puzzle on the mountain map, classically a great map for the cats. And today we're faced with a little bit of a paradoxical situation. Um, let's take a look around the board here. The cats, as you'll note, have a bit of a lopsided building approach here. They have four sawmills and only two recruiters. Now, as far as lopsided development goes, this is not a bad way to go for the cats. Uh, there's no pressure on any of these sawmills, which is excellent. The recruiters are forward, uh, helping them to keep some control over the position. Although, you will notice that in both of these recruiter clearings, they are tied for presence. Here with the duchy, here with the river folk. The one thing that is hampering the cat's position a little bit is actually these two snares from the corvids. Snares, as you'll recall, don't allow warriors to move out of the clearings the snare is in. Nor do they allow any enemy pieces to be placed into the clearing with the snare. So, the thing that I'm looking at right now is the sawmill is not going to generate any wood this turn. Yikes. But to get a better grip on this position, let's take a walk around the other player boards to see what they have to show us. Starting with the river folk. The river folk are at 26 points, doing pretty well for themselves. Uh, actually set up to probably win on their turn, I would think. One thing I have noticed about the river folk here is that they've crafted a bunch of items. In fact, they've crafted two of those items on their last turn, the sword and the coins for a five-point swing to get them all the way up to 26. They have two trade posts left to place, a fox and a mouse, and whew, they've got a lot of cats and a couple of moles there to help them get the job done. They can easily throw down either of those trade posts. Not going to be easy to prevent that victory unless we win ourselves. Uh, let's take a look at the service costs here. So the river folk has three services that you can hire by spending meeples. Obviously the cats have purchased plenty of services on their turns. But the three services are purchase a hand card, purchase river boats, and purchase mercenaries. All three of those services are set to four right now, so it will cost four meeples to purchase any of them. The Riverfolk have a public hand, and it's a little small on this sideboard, so let's view it in a bigger way. Here we go. We have a bird ambush, an informants, a rabbit partisans, a tunnels, and an arms trader, which is the bird sword crafting card. Okay, maybe a couple of useful options in there for us cats. But let's keep strolling over to the duchy. The duchy were bopped early on in the southwestern clearing. Uh, after an early Bridget sway... They lost a building, and they've been making kind of a slow roll comeback since then. Although, I do have to say with this current position, they are poised to really dominate the board, and probably could swing a nine-point turn, I imagine. They do have the Earl of Stone swayed, so that's a couple of points there. They're sitting at 21, which is technically last place, but their position is very promising. The buildings are well defended. They have tunnels in very nice clearings here, able to reinforce those buildings and able to get out on the map a little bit. Currently, it seems that their goal is to put some pressure on the cats over here. And on their previous turn, they had attacked the cats in this clearing, but had rolled a bit poorly. So now we're stuck with a bit of a stalemate here. Last, let's take a look at the Corvid Conspiracy. Corvid Conspiracy also having a pretty nice game. They're sitting at 22 points, which is great. Uh, they have an unflipped plot ready to flip for 5 points. And as you'll see, they do have a good bit of crafting as well. They've got a T and a boot crafted. Mainly the thing I'm focused on is how much these snares really bum me out. They are placed just so well to make the cat's life. Very difficult. Just a total headache. But, we're the cats, 
and we're going to win this game. So in order to make a plan for how we're going to win, let's take a look at our starting hand of cards. We have a Rabbit Dominance, we have a Crossbow, and we have an Anvil. All right, let's minimize that. The thing I am noticing is uh, we have this Anvil in our hand, and we do have a Fox Workshop. So couldn't we craft that Anvil? Well, no, we've already crafted it. Crafted it on turn one. It means that we can't use this card to craft. However, there is a crossbow still available, so we can per perhaps think about crafting that crossbow. All right, but the thing is, is this is also a bird card, so we might want to spend it for an action. Let's go into bird song. In any other game, bird song would mean generating wood, but this is a game with the Riverfolk Company, so we have to look over to them and see if we want to purchase any services. All right, as we said before, the service cost is four for each of the services, for the hand card, for the river boats, and for the mercenaries. And glancing around the map, I am noticing one thing that could cramp the style of the cats here, and that's that there's an awful lot of meeples on the board. And there's an awful lot of meeples in the funds of the river folk already. So let's just quickly tally those up. How many cats are there on the board? We have 16. Currently looking at 16 on the board, plus an additional 5 on the Riverfolk board. That gives us 21 cats in play with only 4 left in the supply. Whoo! That means we can purchase a service if we choose, but only one, and just barely. And the other thing to consider here, if we purchase services, then we'll have 0 cats left in our supply, which means that these recruiters... Uh, won't be able to recruit any meeples. All right, we can't place anybody in this one anyway. But this recruiter won't be able to recruit anybody. On a similar note, let's look at the Duchies meeples. They've got a lot of people out on the board, right? Plus two funds with the otters. Yeah, they've got all 20 meeples out of the supply. It sure is nice having a bunch of citadels. So they're not going to be recruiting anybody else in their turn either. Let's take a look at that hand of cards one more time from the River Folk to see if we want to purchase anything. Ambush, Informants, Rabbit Partisans, Tunnels, Arms Trader. Okay, we only have one Fox Workshop, so we're not going to be able to craft that sword, unfortunately. And purchasing a bird card could be interesting. Give us an additional action. But since this is a key consideration to winning the game on your turn as the Marquise, I want you to go ahead and pause the video here and work out which of these services, if any, you would purchase as the Marquise. I'll give you a couple of seconds to think about that. All right. If you said riverboats then congratulations, you will be winning this game. All right, let's go ahead and pay our last four meeples to the otters, bringing them up to 11 funds, a towering 11 funds. And let's go ahead and establish riverboats. Now, riverboats says you treat all rivers as paths. All right, so in addition to the regular pathways, you can now move along the river. So, for real now, let's move into birdsong. As you'll notice... No wood is generated by the sawmill. Sad day. And we're going to go ahead and move into our daylight phase, which starts off with a question, do we want to craft this crossbow? All right, again, another major decision that we're facing on our turn as the cats. You know, what can I say? It's a puzzle. Each decision is important. So, once again, pause the video, assess the position, and decide whether you want to craft this or save it for an action. I'll give you a couple of seconds. All right, for those of you who said save it for an action, I'm sorry you won't be winning this game. Now, instead, we're going to go ahead and craft the crossbow. But crossbow in hand and point gained, we're sitting at 24. And now we are at the action portion of our daylight phase. We have three actions to work with. We've passed up the opportunity to get one bird card, and we've, we've crafted the other one. <laughs> so we are truly working with just three actions here. 
So for the last time, I want you to go ahead and pause the video and work out which three actions you would take as the Marquise de Cat to win the game. I'll give you a couple of seconds. All right, let's solve this together and see how you did. We're going to start the action phase by, of course, spending a card to open up this last pathway. That's just a free point. Might as well grab it. Somehow it made it this whole game without getting opened. I don't know. I don't know what kind of game this is. <laughs> All right. Sitting at 25. Now let's begin our three actions with, you guessed it, a march. And this march is going to take our meeples over to this edge clearing where we now rule as the Marquise. Very important. All right. Action number two is going to be another march action. Now that we've ruled this edge clearing, we can actually move down into the corner. And since we've hired river boats, we can reinforce the pass directly from the keep. And you see what we've done now? We've established rule all along the river with two march actions. And since we treat rivers as pathways, they also function as pathways for traveling wood. So, you guessed it, our last action is going to be to build a sawmill for four points, and that gets us all the way to 29. If you worked that out, congratulations, you are an excellent Marquise player. And for those of you who are asking, 29 points? I thought we needed 30. Well, fear not, as we move into evening phase and end our turn, we do rule in the pass, and that's worth one point at the end of the turn. And that's it, exactly 30 points, and a towering victory indeed, and just in the nick of time. Congratulations, Marquise players. You've defeated a, a, a lot of contenders there. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for joining me for this puzzle. Uh, this was a, a bit of a tricky one. Not everything is as it appears. I wanna take this moment to quickly announce that my podcast, Woodland War Machine, has just gone live on the internet. I will include a link in the description below this video. This podcast is all about Root. It's so great. My co-hosts Murder She Root and Jake Michaels from Good Time Society are amazing board game instructors and just great people all around and super fun to talk to. So first episode has dropped. Again, check the description. I'll make sure you guys get there. And until next time, Listen to Woodland War Machine, and I'll see you around the woodland.